Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to another video. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. My name's Melissa and around here you'll find all sorts of beauty content. For example, in today's video, what we're gonna do is dig into some discount makeup. And I'm telling you, we have a full face going on here. We have a lot of it to get through. I did go shopping at TJ Maxx and Marshalls and I kept saving things up until I got pretty much a full face so we can try it on today. And when I go makeup shopping at a discount store, I don't just like to get the stuff that's on sale. I really like to dig through and get the stuff that's on super cheap clearance. So if you wanna see what I got and how much it costs, then let's get into it. All right guys, I'm super excited for this video. I love trying out new makeup, even if it's not brand new to the market, it's brand new to me and it's still exciting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pin my hair up. I'm not sure how long it's gonna stay like this, but we'll see. So my face is free and clear of any makeup, but I do have a little bit of skincare going on right now. And if you're curious about anything that I ever have on my face, I have everything linked down below in the description box. I will say I did get into a new eye cream today and the eye cream that I use was great. So like any sensible person, the first step in our makeup routine is the primer. And this one is from Beauty Blender and it's called the Leveler. This is one of those pore filling primers that really get into all your pores and completely smooth out the entire base. I did try a sample of this a while ago and I really liked it. So I was excited I found it in the full size and this did cost $7.99. So here's what this primer looks like. I will say that because it's such a thick pore filling primer, it is kind of hard to get out of the squeeze tube. So here's what it looks like when I get it out of the tube. It's very thick and kind of mousse-like. And when I blend it out, it just kind of completely smooths out the entire surface of my hand. This primer also does have a little bit of a base to it and it does come in shades. So make sure you get one in your shade range so that way it doesn't look a little bit odd on you. So what I'm gonna do with this is put it on the most porous areas of my face. And I'm just gonna take a little bit. I'm not gonna do very much at all because with these types of primers, they're not, you don't need a lot. They don't go all over your face. You just need to put them in your most textured and porous areas. And now what I'm gonna do with this is just pat it in to my pores. This primer is really great, but it does have a lot of silicones in it. So if you're sensitive to silicone, you just wanna be aware of that. But if you love silicone based primers, then this is great. For the foundation, we're gonna take the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. I have wanted to try this since it launched, and I know it launched just about forever ago. But the thing was, I think this launched at about $14. And when you pay that price that the companies are putting on these products, you are voting for these price increases. So I refused to buy this foundation, A, until they lowered the price, or B, until I found it at TJ Maxx for the right price, which would be around $5.99. So I did get mine in the shade light 280N. There wasn't very many shades to pick from, but I did try to get the one that closely matched me. So here's the two once I got it unpackaged and you're getting just a little bit more product in here than you are with a typical glass bottle foundation. I was surprised to see that because when I hold this in my hands, it definitely feels like you're getting less product. And I also wanna point out that this does have SPF in it. So there is an expiration date on here. So if you do happen to find one of these at the discount stores, beware of that expiration date so you're not putting expired SPF on your face. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this on my hand. I'm not sure how much of this I'm supposed to use since I've never used it before. So I'm just gonna start out with two pumps and I'm just gonna dot this around my face in no special manner. I usually don't use this method when going in with a new foundation because you never know if it's gonna dry too quick. And I'm taking a new blending brush. This is the Buffing Foundation brush from Profusion. This color is definitely too warm for me, but I'm gonna still use it for today. This foundation brush is really nice. This is the first time I've ever tried it and I do love dense, but kind of fluffy on the tip brushes like this. And Profusion brushes are definitely really, really cheap, but they're really nice quality. I do have quite a few in my collection. So even though I did dot my face a little haphazardly without thinking that it was gonna be dry before I got to it, it's still blending out quite nicely and it does have quite a bit of coverage to it. I was surprised. Everyone compares this to the IT Cosmetics CC Cream and in my opinion, this is not comparable to that. If you're using a foundation that is off from your natural skin tone, make sure you get your ears and your neck when you're applying it. So I think the formula on the IT Cosmetics CC Cream is a little better than this e.l.f. This e.l.f. is very, it actually is more serum-like than the IT Cosmetics. And you can definitely smell and feel the sunscreen in the IT Cosmetics where it's not detectable in this whatsoever. And I can tell you just right now from using this for the very first time that this foundation does oxidize and it oxidizes pretty heavily. So I'm really happy with how this worked. I do like the amount of coverage and I had a really bad breakout right here and it just completely covered that up the way I like it to look. 
I wouldn't consider this a lightweight formula. I can definitely see it and feel it upon my face. I wouldn't consider this an everyday foundation, but probably when I'm trying to get a little bit more dressed up. Next, I couldn't find a concealer, so we're gonna have to go with an under eye brightener today. This one's from Milani and it's the Peach Tinted Under Eye Brightener and I only pay $2.99 for this. Now, since my foundation's a few shades darker than I normally go, I'm not sure if this is gonna be way too bright for what we're having going on right now. I'm just shaking it up right now and then I'm gonna swatch it for you. So here's the color of the under eye brightener and now swatching it out, I don't think it's gonna be too light. I think it's gonna be just perfect for what we need today. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit on the tip of my index finger and tap a little bit onto the place where I would normally put concealer. And something I've really been enjoying doing lately is taking a fluffier brush and tapping in my concealer with the tip of that brush. Okay, so using this on one eye and looking at it as compared to the other eye with nothing on it, I can see a difference. It is definitely more brighter, but I wouldn't say it's bright enough where I love it. However, I'm just really, really picky with my products. I'm only looking for the best products for the most affordable price. And I just kind of expected more from this, honestly. But again, let me tell you that it's not bad product. It definitely works the way it says it does. Now we're gonna completely set the base and we're gonna take this Bite Beauty Boundary Breaker Setting Powder. And the cool thing about this powder is that it was never released in stores. The only place that you could actually get this powder was at TJ Maxx. The company Bite Beauty went out of business before this officially launched, so that's why this powder is really neat to have. This powder also has peptides in it, which my skin absolutely loves, so that's really cool to see that ingredient inside of a setting powder. I also paid $7.99 for this powder, which I think is a great deal as compared to how much this would cost in stores retail. And I also did grab the shade Pineapple. So here's what this little component looks like, and it's cute, but it's nothing special. You're also getting 16 grams of product in here, which is about half of a normal larger size setting powder. This powder also has a little twisty plastic dispenser on top of it, and I love these because if you have to bring this powder somewhere with you, you can just close it and it doesn't spill out all over your bag. So here's what the powder swatch is like, and in the powder world, this would be considered a translucent gold. And to be the bearer of bad news, this powder does have shimmer particles in it. That's not bad news to me. I love a shimmery powder, but I know a lot of you like a completely matte setting powder, and this is not that. As I'm trying to get some out onto the lid, I will say it's coming out really, really slow because the holes in the dispenser are tiny. So I'm just gonna put this powder all over my face and then we'll take a look at what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so I have two things to say about this powder. The first thing is that this powder does come in a shade range and it does kind of have a base to it. So you are best to get the one that properly suits your shade. The second thing that I have to say about this is unfortunately, this does not look good to set the whole face with. Since it does have a shimmery radiant finish, it does really highlight any texture or pores. You could actually probably use this for a low dose highlight. Okay, so I couldn't find a bronzer, but I could find a contour. And this one is from KVD Beauty, and this is called the Shade and Light Contour Palette. Now this little guy is just a sampling of a much bigger palette, and I only did pay $7.99 for this little thing. And there's two shades in here. There's a deeper shade and there's a lighter shade. So you can use both of them to kind of shadow and highlight different parts of your face. So the packaging on this is super cute. I really do like it. It has a gothic feel and it's really, you could just tell it's really well made. So here's the two shades in here. Here's your contour and here's your highlight. And here's what they look like swatched on my hand. Now keep in mind that this is the light duo. So there's other ones available depending on your shade range. Now I'm gonna take some of this highlighter powder in here. So I'm just kind of making my under eye a little bit more matte than it currently is and brightening it up a little bit. Now I'm taking my angle brush and going into the contour powder. And these powders are pressed really softly. So you're gonna get a lot of kickback with them. So make sure you tap off your brush. And I'm just gonna do a gentle contour with this. Nothing strong today. So both the contour and the highlighter in here worked wonderfully and I wouldn't expect any less. This is great. Our next product is from Sila, and this is both a putty blush and bronzer duo. This is a hybrid between a cream and a powder product and today we're going to try it over setting powder to see if it works well that way. So here's what the palette looks like and then here's what the shades look like swatched out. So swatching these, I can tell that they feel more like powder, so I think they're gonna go over a completely set base perfectly fine. And I also didn't realize that I had a bronzer in here, so I'm gonna be able to go ahead and bronze up my face. So the thing with this is since it is kind of a putty formula, it doesn't have any fallout. Now I'm going in for the Pretty Coral Blush. 
These products in here are not really that pigmented, so you gotta take a while to build them up because if you want an intense look, this is not the product that's gonna do that for you right away. So I think that this is a solid win. I really like how the look came out, although I did have to take a little bit building it up. I really do like this. For highlight, we're gonna try something a little bit different today. This is from Becca and it's called the Light Shifter Doing Tint. I paid $8 on Super Mega Clearance for this, which I think is a great price for this brand, which unfortunately is no longer in business, but I still like their products when I can find them. Now I think that this product is supposed to be kind of like the e.l.f. Halo Glow. And by that, I mean you can use it in such a multitude of ways. And today we're gonna try to use this as a liquid highlight and put it on our cheekbone. So here's what this pretty little tube looks like. And here's what it looks like swatched on my hand. I did get the shade 2.5, which is called Light Seeker. This is another one of those products that does have a shade range, so you're gonna wanna probably get one near your shade. So I'm just gonna apply just a tiny bit to my middle finger. And I'm gonna apply this to my cheekbone area. And I'm gonna take my ring finger and blend it out. Okay, I can confirm to you guys that this product is not meant to be used in this way because it completely lifted my base and there's a ring where there's no product because this highlighter pulled everything up. Since this product causes such high separation, I'd be interested to see how this would best be used. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some to the other side of my face just so we have matching sides. Next, we're going to get started on our eyebrows, which has lately been my favorite part, and I got two products for eyebrows. First, I got this Makeup Revolution Eyebrow Pencil. This is in a very deep shade for me, so today we're gonna sport the dark brows. It also has a little toothbrush on the end, which is quite interesting for a pencil. I also only paid $2.99 for this. And then the second product we have is from a brand called Chella Beauty, which I just adore, so it was exciting seeing something from them in there. And for this, I paid $2.99, and this is an eyebrow cream. Now, this is in the shade light brown, so I'm not sure if it's gonna lighten our brows or kind of meld in with the dark brown. We'll see when we get there. So here's the pencil out of the packaging. At first I was kind of eh about the brush being exposed like this because I really don't like my brushes just rolling around, just being all open to the air and everything. But when I lifted the cap, under the cap is a definer pencil. And then on the other end, you have your micro pencil. So you actually get two pencils in one plus a brush. So here's the dark brown tone in this particular pencil. I do love that it's true to color and it's cool tone. So the first thing I'm doing is taking the thick definer side and I'm gonna underline my entire eyebrow. So I just got done underlining my entire eyebrow and kind of filling in the back half with a thick definer side. It was so easy to create a very straight line and then when I had to fill it in, I just twisted the pencil sideways and one line and the thing completely filled in. So I went in with this micro point and I put a few upward going strokes here just to give it more of an ombre look. And then I took this brush and I blended everything together. So here's the thing, this pencil is amazing. I love it, I will use it all the time, but the brush on here sucks. I'm not mad about it though, because I didn't pay a lot of money for this and I wasn't crazy about this exposed to the air toothbrush thingy to begin with. So overall, I am very happy and very satisfied with this. Now we're gonna dig into this little Chella Beauty brow cream and see what this is all about. Okay, so this brow cream comes in two pieces. On one side, you have an angled brush that's built into the component itself and it has the side with a larger cap. And on the other side, you have a pretty decent sized jar with a ton of pomade up inside of it. So I'm taking the included brush and I'm gonna grab some of this pomade. And I'm just gonna casually put this inside my eyebrow to see how much it covers. Guys, this pomade, it's a little bit hard to get out of the container, but once you get it on the brush and on your eyebrow, it's really nice. Now for ordinary purposes, I probably wouldn't wear this pomade in conjunction with this pencil because both of them don't let each other shine and be the star of the show, but I do like each one on its own. Now the thing is today, we don't have any hold for the eyebrow, so we're just gonna deal with them falling down today. For eyes, I have an eyeshadow palette, a liquid eyeshadow, and a liquid black eyeliner. So we're gonna start with this eyeshadow palette by Dragon Beauty, and this is her Volume 3 Fantasy palette. I paid $6.99 for this palette, and there are definitely other color stories floating around out there if you love this brand or these types of palettes. So here's the packaging. I do love the cartoonish vibe of it, but I'm not crazy about eyes on palettes. However, in this circumstance, it didn't really deter me because I did wanna try this formula. So in here, we're getting five egg-shaped shades and I'm excited to see what they're like. Okay guys, today we're gonna start with the matte black on a fluffy brush. You know if there's a matte black in a palette, I have to try it. So I'm gonna stick this fluffy brush in my very outermost corner and just kind of stamp it. 
Okay, now that we have the black on there, I'm gonna take this pastel pink and blend the black out with this pink. Okay, now I'm taking this bright pink shade and I'm gonna run this on my entire lower lash line. And now I'm gonna take what I think is this red metallic and put this all over my lid. Oh no guys, this is a bright pink metallic. I am getting a bunch of fallout with this palette, so it would probably be better to do your eyes before your base with this one. I usually put on an eye priming routine before I do any eyeshadow or any eye work in general, really. And I didn't put any on today before I did this just because I'm just playing around with makeup. And I can't believe how nicely these shades are blending and layering. And I'm just having a great time playing with this palette today. And now I'm finally taking the last shade in the palette, which looks to be a duochrome shade. And I'm going to use this as my inner corner and brow bone highlight. So here's my eyeshadow look using this palette right here. And I will say I did love it. I had so much fun with it. And I think it came out great just with the five colors. I did get a chance to use every single shade in here. And I was very happy with each one. This palette's really cute and travel friendly. Since there's a matte black in here, you can get quite a different variety of looks out of here. I will say that the names of the shades in here aren't really PG. But other than that, I can't find anything to question about this palette. I do have this CoverGirl liquid eyeshadow and I paid $2.99 for this in the shade At First Blush. This is shade number two in the entire range. I'm excited to try a CoverGirl liquid shadow, which I've never tried a drugstore liquid shadow before. So it comes in the standard packaging for a liquid shadow and it has a flat paddle foot. And here's what the shade looks like swatched out. It's very, very pretty. Now trying to remove the swatch from my hand, I do see micro glitters in here. So this will probably fall out onto your face after a long day's wear. So the way I'm gonna apply this is just coat the applicator so it's built up with a lot of product and then grab a flat brush and just paint some onto the tip of my brush. And I'm just gonna put this on the very front part of my eye. Okay, so this just kicked the sparkle factor up to a 10. Do you guys see how pretty this looks on my eyelids? I really can't get over it. When I swatch this, I could see a little bit of a base, so I didn't think it was gonna look this good, but I'm really impressed with this. I would go as far as to say that if you could find this at your TJ Maxx for $2.99, I would definitely say don't skip on this. The last thing we have for eyes is an eyeliner, and this is from Bite Beauty, and it's called the Upswing Extreme Liquid Eyeliner. And this one is in the shade Solid Black, and to be honest with you, I've always liked this for the packaging. It is so pretty. Okay, so this is a two-piece felt tip eyeliner. I'm not really too picky as far as what type of tip I like for eyeliners. I just kind of like them all. I do think it's cool that it comes in two parts. So you have your little inkwell right here and your brush right here. It does get pretty thin at the tip. So I do foresee being able to do quite a thick line and quite a thin line with this. I'm excited to see what type of finish this has. All right, guys, so here's the eyeliner. And I will say that this dries down a fully solid matte black. It doesn't bleed at all, and this is so easy to work with. So guys, we have one more step in our TJ Maxx roundup, and it's lips. So I have one lip gloss from Doja Cat in the shade Berry, and then I have a lip polish from Buxom in the shade Leslie. So let's take a look at each one and see which one would kind of match what we have going on today. So we have our two glosses. We have the Buxom one in a light peach shade, and then we have the BH Cosmetics Doja Cat gloss in a very cherry shade. This one smells like baked goods, and this one doesn't smell like anything, but this is a pumpkin gloss. I paid $6.99 for the Buxom one and $3.99 for the BH Cosmetics. Here's swatches of each one, and you can see that the BH Cosmetics has a pigmented base, so we're gonna get a lot of color from that one. And the Buxom one is very sheer, but you can see just a hint of color from it. Now, as far as what's gonna match my eyes today, I don't always like to match, so I'm gonna go in with the Cherry Lip Gloss, and this is supposed to have a little plumping effect, so I wanna see how it feels. So here's the Doja Cat Lip Gloss, and I will say this is more like a metallic lip creme to me. It's a really nice formula, and I don't feel any tingling or burning at all. I just think the name Plumping Lip Gloss just kind of throws off what it really is. I think it's really fun though, and not bad for the price. So yeah, guys, this is my full face of TJ Maxx and Marshall's makeup, all makeup that I got on a great discount. I think it was pretty much a full face. We did get a lot of products from there, and I'm very happy with the final result. Of course, when you're doing a video like this, you can't really guarantee that all the products are gonna match together, and in this case, we definitely don't match. 
But I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And if you did, please don't hesitate to give me a giant thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, just hit that thumbs down button. And until next time, bye.